Sonny, Joey, five double low. Got some goats in the field. Get ready for a shakedown. Prepare for a shakedown. We from Philly where they clap like huddles when they break down. Get ready for a shakedown. We underdogs, my guy. I kinda used to all the hate now. Prepare for a man, y'all get it. My QB got swag, my wideout is award winning. It's fly, goes fly. Joey and 5 double O. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Here's a quote you can sing back. Shake squad up and don't be a ding back. It's a shakedown. Don't you frown. It's a shakedown. Let's go. Yo, by the way, Kick Dick back here. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Philly Shakedown Podcast starring Ugly Philly 500 and Beautiful Joey Shakes. What is happening, my man? Nothing. I wasn't late, though. I wasn't late. No. So, just saying. I was late. For the people out there. I had a naked gun piss, dude. That You know, it's like I couldn't stop going to the bathroom. I had to go to the bathroom so much, I could not could not help it. Um, what is going on, everybody? Uh, Never Ever's here. Davey's here. Twits. Jade is Mr. Jackson, CZ, uh, Dave does, Danielson, uh, let's see, Eagles, T. Grant, Davey, Aurora, Fat Sonny, Weezer, IDF, uh, and everybody else is here. Thank you so much. Jay Koch, uh, ACP Bala, what's going on, Sir James, uh, Steve, thank you everybody for being here. It's the Philly Shakedown Podcast, and, uh, Joey, we got, oh, I mean, dude, I mean, there is so much going on with this team right now, man. It's it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Uh, where the hell do we start? It's like, where did we leave off from last, last week? Last week seems like it was like ages ago. It doesn't feel like it was just a week ago, you know? I mean, we, we can go over the, uh, I don't know who we, because I'm trying to find out who we, we left off on, because we signed more free agents you know like the uh tyler hall signing we can kind yeah of yeah well them. yeah t- well tyler hall we signed um to me my thoughts are uh you know uh a guy come in rotational fight for a spot i i don't really expect much more than that yeah to be honest with you you know uh oren burks that's right oren burks signed the day we right before we start we draft we we went live last week so in mm-hmm. that time we signed that PJ Mustafer defensive tackle Hall Paris Campbell and then today quarterback Will Greer yeah um I the, the, the whole thing is like all right you know it seems like he's a guy that really kind of has floated around but but has some talent that they kind of like and from a depth perspective and something he may he may be a guy that could be a pleasant surprise if he could develop. It, it just seems like to me with him, uh, he had a few starts in in, in Oakland in Vegas, uh, um, and and he did some good things. I think he had his first sack last year. Um, perhaps he's a guy that if you give him enough time with one coaching staff, maybe they can develop him into something. Yeah, he can. I mean, he can play. I mean, he's had most of his snaps inside the slot and uh, at the nickel spot. He's played outside corners, played safety. So he's another hybrid type guy that they're probably going to throw him all over the place during camp. But statistics are actually pretty good. I, I had them on me, but I forgot where they're at. But he's got yeah. some good statistics for limited snaps. So they're getting in. They're they're getting guys that fit the scheme, and uh, you know, uh, so, so a lot of hybrid guys too. So which is good. So it's a good signing yeah. for now. Yeah. Johnny Blaze of Madden, man. Thank you so much, man. Uh, for his first Super Chat night, and he says, got Eagles up there. Go Birds is right. Thank Hell you, yeah, my dude. man. Johnny Blaze of Madden, are you, are you, what's your ranking in Madden, anyways? Like, are you, what's your ranking? The J.C. Horn trade. There, there is no J.C. Horn trade. I, I saw one guy posted an opinion about J.C. Horn. And people are like, oh, J.C. Hornet. That guy was just saying the Eagles probably have inquired about him. Nothing, there's there's nothing to J.C. Hornet. Now, if at, you're asking me, do we want him? Eh. At this point in time, all I'm thinking about right now is I feel like right now, since you know we still have a few weeks till the draft, whatever, but I feel like James Bradbury is going to be on this roster. Yeah. I yeah. mean, at this point, like, He's you got to think about it. We we went through we, we we went through and I didn't mean to cut you off but I'm, I'm a little hyper today. We went through the the uh, 
the, his salary cap numbers and stuff uh, like two weeks ago. It, how are you going to get rid of him? He's cheap for the year. Four million dollars for the year. I mean, it's cheap, and I know we keep on talking about corner in the first round nonstop. But until I see a, a post June designation, I, I don't see that even happening. Why are they signing so? I don't think Avante Max is coming back. Like, look at the corners that they're signing right now. You have Isaiah yeah. Rogers coming into the mix. You have now you have well, Tyler Hall. Well, we're gonna so. talk about we're gonna talk about corner because I'm gonna have a lot. I have a lot to say about cornerback mm. tonight. Uh, I do. Um. So, so Tyler Hall was, I, you know, I, I like the signing from a depth perspective. N no big deal. Then a kind of a, a, a surprise signing was wide receiver Paris Campbell. Mm. Uh, we, you know, I know, I mean, I, I liked Paris Campbell coming out of the draft. I would much rather had him over if Ortega Whiteside, you mm. know, because of his speed. I think he ran like a 4-3-2-40. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's fast. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one? I mean, that was the Jeffrey Lurie pick back in 2019. All the news came out that, I guess, Lurie picked picked J.J. Ortega Whiteside over Campbell in the second round over Joe Douglas and, and Howie Roseman, which I'm not surprised over that. We were putting everything on Howie. Um, but, you know, he hasn't really done well the last, you know, two years ago he did well over 600 yards. Like, he – you know, it was at the Giants last year. I mean, who really produced last year? They don't. I mean, they they draft guys like Hyatt and some of these other guys. I didn't really give them a chance. I mean, I think a pure, you know, a pure slot guy. You can move him to the outside. You can do whatever you want with him, really. But yeah. uh, I think it's a. I think I like this signing better than Devontae Parker, no doubt. Yeah, me too. Hundred percent. Yeah. Is, is it is it the only receiver we're going to sign? Do you think they have more interest? It was interesting because they're going to the Texas Pro Day. They're looking I, at Xavier. You see, know what I mean? Some of these other guys I, that are. In there. Here's my opinion on the receiver. Now, this is just my opinion. But you sign two cheap veteran guys, right? Mm -hmm. uh, both capable of playing in the slot if you need them to. But I think it sets you up to draft a wide receiver early. I, I really think they're drafting a receiver early. Not first round, but I think between mm – -hmm. I, I think one of those second-round picks is going to be a receiver. Yeah. It just makes sense, you know, and, and, and you get a receiver that you draft that can probably beat both those guys out. But if they don't, if there's a guy that's not there, then guess what? You still have the ability to play those guys. Mm -hmm. I like Campbell because of the speed that he's mm -hmm. going to put in the slot, stretch the field. Um, I, I, I think he could be, I think he's, uh, upgrade over Quez Watkins, to be honest 100%. with you, yeah. you know, and that's the main thing. Right. Tony says, how can they justify all these signs not sign Reddick? We are going to get to that. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. Clark, thank you for the super chat. Goes 500 shakes, NFC championship or bust. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I and, and, and as long as they keep Reddick, I, I think, uh, I think the Reddick signing, I think the Reddick situation uh, for me, tells me whether they're, you know, borderline Super Bowl contender or Super Bowl NFC favorites. That That's how much I feel about the, the Reddick situation. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, no one knows. Thank you for Super Chat. He goes, TJ Tampa or Cooper DeJean for a cornerback out of the draft? I haven't watched any Cooper DeJean yet at all. I, I have not watched him at all. And I'm going to. I just have it yet, so it, it it's it's impossible for me to say right now. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be right for me to say. Yeah, he's the only corner they brought in on a pre-draft. Yeah, um, that's up there in the in the first I, round. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we'll find out. Uh, but th thank you for super chat. I wish I could answer that. Give me about two weeks, and I will have you an answer for you. I promise. Um, you know, they also so so they signed those two guys. The other signing they did was what? What was Paris Campbell, and then it was Will Greer, right? That was the was, yeah. that, the, was that the last one today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a camp guy. He stinks. Uh, uh, come on, he stunk with Dallas. He he's familiar with, with Kellen Moore. That's all he's it is. Familiar I mean. with Kellen Moore. Tanner McKee's better than him right now. Yeah. I, I think Pickett may not even beat up Tanner McKee. Tanner, mm -mm. Don't sleep on Tanner McKee, baby. Don't sleep we'll on see. Yeah, there's a good chance. I mean, now you have four quarterbacks now for competition. You got some camp arms in there. So they got to add a guy that sucks. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's going to happen. I know. So. I know. Dude, I, I did a video about Paris Campbell and literally was like, yeah, he he may 
he may he may end up being your fourth wide receiver this year. And Mark Holmes is like, Philly 500 did a video, and he's saying that Paris Campbell's like Jerry Rice. I'm like, dude, what the hell? So I did a video like just showing what, what all the lies he has. And then he texted me. He's like, yeah, you busted me, man. I, I didn't watch the video. I'm like, yeah, you just make <laughs> shit up about me, you know? It's like, come on. It's crazy, man. Uh, we rumored to want JC Horn said, Mike, where? where where's the proof? I, I, I don't, I haven't seen one report. I saw one thing on Twitter. I don't remember who it was. And they just said that how he calls about everybody. JC Horn may be a good person to call, talk to. So I hope Mike's right. I like JC Horn, but I haven't seen anything on JC Horn. I don't think there's been anything. It's been nothing. Yeah. So I think that's just. Yeah. So well, I don't, I don't, I just, I just think it's, it's an opinion. I don't know. Uh, and listen, everybody's right to say opinion. I think we should go. I do it all the time. Hey, I, I think we should go after this guy. Uh, Zay Boogie Davis, Super Chick, it's 500 Joey. You hear about JC Horn rumors? <laughs> no. Tell, tell me about the JC Horn rumors. Send me a link. Somebody send me a link to, uh, I saw, I saw the, the, I saw it was an opinion. I saw it, but it wasn't a report. It was just, a, see, that's what I, I, I did see an opinion. I don't remember who it was, but, um, I saw an opinion about JC Horn. I didn't see anything saying we're going interested. Now, would I like JC? I would, I wouldn't mind bringing JC Horn in, but to be honest with you, I would much rather draft a corner. I'd much rather draft a corner at this mm. point, dude. You know? Same. I, I I don't know. Yeah, there isn't. It's not a report. Yeah, I I don't. You know. It, it, you know. Now, if you're asking, if Mike was making an opinion or somebody made an opinion, I, I my my comments about the opinion are: I think it's a good idea to go check them out. Um, you know, it, it, do your due diligence. But if it was if it was up to me, I would draft a cornerback in the first round before I would trade for J.C. Horn, because. I want the guy. In a, I think these corners coming out. I think they're all very, very talented. I think there's mm -hmm. multiple good corners in this first round. Mm -hmm. You get one on a rookie contract, you know. Yeah, Mister Rudy Poo, shout out to you. He says trade, trade. Eagles get the second, forty third, and a third from the Falcons for Reddick. A second plus a second and a fifth. I think it's fair value. So you want to trade. 10 spots. So essentially you're trading 10 spots and getting a third. See, I, I need more, Mr. Rudy Poo. I thank you for super chat. Dude. But I, I want that I want that 53 pick clean. Like I will give me that clean, give me it clean and that and that and that third, and I'll give back a fifth. You know? Um ah man, it, does, it just seems like it just seems like we could get more though, no? I don't. I mean, I how much? How much more? You're talking like two second rounders. I mean, at this point, like look at look at how everyone's getting traded right now. Look at all the value. I know it's different positions. Like Sneed gets traded okay. for a 25 third. Burns has less statistics, but just has youth at 26, 27. And you know the Giants give up a second round pick and then some. I mean, what, what do you think you're going to get for Reddick? You know, we know we're not getting a first round pick. We know that if Reddick is gone, anybody, whether you move up in the draft, whether you whether you trade or, you know, I, I don't know. Are the Eagles going to pay over $10 million for three edge rushers? I, I don't know because that's what they're doing right now. Which Sweat, Bryce Huff, and obviously Reddick would be the third guy. So, well, well, to me, it's like, why not? You're, you're, it's not like you're hurting cap wise. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like you can't afford it. You know, I, I I have a video coming out tomorrow on this. I I, I filmed it um, about an hour ago. I have to, I haven't edited it or anything yet. And, and, and we talk about Reddick and Mr. Rudy. Put thank you for the super chat, man. Um, it, it it might be a fail. It might be something that that sounds like something that they would do trade wise. Um, for me personally, I don't know. I don't know that I want to get rid of a, a double digit sack guy. You know, and and the reason why for many, you know, if you don't know. The reason why we're talking about this um, is because of this. Uh, appearing on Sports Center on Saturday morning, ESPN's Jeremy Fowler reported expectation around the NFL is that Reddick will be traded with the Arizona Cardinals and Falcons cited as potential landing spots. And he goes on to say, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but league wide, the expectation is the Eagles are going to trade Reddick and they're being patient. They want to get what they can. 
Atlanta, Arizona are two potential teams. Uh, and, you know, a big reason why is because of the signing of Bryce Huff. Um, what, what are your thoughts, man? I mean, I for me, I, I feel like you're, you're, you're going to get a downgrade whatever you get. If you lose Reddick and try to get somebody else, whether you move up in this draft, it's a downgrade. Whether you get another free agent, you know, it's a downgrade. It's, it's going to be a downgrade. You're not going to get a first-round pick. Uh, for me, it's I think it's on both sides. I don't think Reddick is getting the money that he wants, and I think the Eagles, and especially since it's taking this long, I don't think Howie's getting the compensation that he wants. Because look at the conversation from some of these other players that they're getting. It's not much. I mean, you know, it's not much at all. Yeah. No, no, I hear you. I mean, I mean, my my thoughts, and, and let me read this real quick. It's Lulu says, and Dave for Super Chat, he goes, you hear we could trade for Patriots cornerback Mike Oxlong. I did not. <laughs> uh, but but he might be a, a very valuable asset. Uh, no one knows. Dave for Super Chat, he goes, Dijon career stats, eight picks, for three for touchdowns. 13 press breakups. Yeah, I mean, I hear a lot of things about him, a lot of things. I just haven't I haven't spent the time yet. And I just don't want to say somebody's better than somebody else until I until I go and watch. And then, you know, I can give my opinion. But uh my here's my thoughts on this, right? And I basically this is what I said in the video. Uh I see the Eagles adding Bryce Huff as having a one of the top pass rushes right now. If you look at the roster that we have, I think the Eagles have one of the best pass rushing groups in the National Football League. Hassan Reddick, Sweat, Huff, Brandon Graham, Nolan Smith, the kid they got from Detroit. Now, if you take Reddick off that list, it just is not the same. It's not the same. You have Josh Sweat had double digit sacks once, and then Bryce Huff who I think is going to be good, and I think will will is is best years are yet to come. Mm-hmm. He's only done it one year. Are we going to put all that pressure on him to be Hassan yeah. Reddick right away? Why not? You already have Reddick on contract. Why not keep Reddick a year? Let this kid go out and play, and then if he shows us, you know, he's the guy, then we have no problem moving on for Reddick. To me, you keep Reddick, you are a Super Bowl contender. You take Reddick away. I think you need another pass rusher. That's just my opinion. Yeah, no, I I agree. I mean, Reddick might be asked, still be not budgeting his to a lower price. I mean, I don't know if it's still twenty five. It might not be at this point, but I don't know if the Eagles are interested in paying him over twenty million because even with Bryce Huff's contract, like you know, it's an expensive contract. But in a couple of years, that contract's going to look really cheap by the production he's going to put for this team. So the seventeen a year is going to be nothing for us um yeah but when it comes to reddick man like yeah i feel like you're gonna be weak on one side i feel like your your defensive line got weak and this is so late in the process now because now you're like through the second week of free agency and there's there's not much left out there and uh you know what are you gonna do you're just gonna let him go get your draft picks and you're just gonna sit there and not and not you know replace it or because it's weird because the same news came out today from mosher that the Eagles are official on a pre-draft visit for Liatu Lai- Latu. That's your boy, yeah. Which is which is weird how both of this news came out on the same day. Reddick trade, and then Latu now, the best edge rusher in this draft, is coming in on a pre-draft. So do you think they want to try to get the best, the best draft compensation possible to use that? And we're and they talked about two teams. They talked the Cardinals, the Falcons. Now the Cardinals have the 35th pick in the second round, which is really good. If the Eagles can acquire that, have three second round picks without swapping, or I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be a, it, I, I would it could have be a swap. To, that's what be. I would have to get that minimum. Third, yeah. That I minimum. mean, a, a second round pick and a mid round pick or something like that. I mean, you can use those and move up. E- I mean, you can move up what? easily if you need to get one of well, these edge rushes. Cra- it's just crazy to me because I know. you're literally, you're literally. You're literally right now, you have a powerhouse of a defensive line. And the Eagles bread and butter on their defense. I don't care what anybody says. It's always get pressure on a quarterback. And they didn't get pressure last year. Now, if if you could get 
if you could keep what you have, I mean, imagine third down being able to put Bryce Huff in. You know, you, I'm thinking things like, you know how they like to put Brandon Graham on pass rush downs inside. You have Huff, you have Sweat, you have Red. I mean, you have a rotation that is going to be fantastic. Uh, and it's going to be very hard to stop. And, you know, and you know where you're really going to miss Reddick when it's like a four point mm -hmm. game, fourth quarter, and you need somebody to get this, get to the quarterback and, and stop this team from driving. Reddick is a closer, and I just don't think you give up a closer like that for a second round pick for a guy that you draft and may or may not work out. I, I don't know. This team's a Super Bowl contender if you keep Reddick. If they yeah. don't trade Reddick and they keep him, you know, all you have to do is restructure, give him some more money for the year, and then let him go out and play, you know, and then what? let him walk. Okay, you didn't get any compensation. Yeah. I understand. But he you had him for a Super Bowl run. Yeah, he doesn't want to leave, but I'm saying, like, it, it comes down to who's messing this deal up. Is it is it Reddick or is it Howie? Like, or it could be both. It could be, you know, maybe both, maybe both sides aren't getting what well, they want. Well, that that's the big question. The big question is, has Reddick said, I'm going to hold out if I don't get a long-term extension? If Reddick has said that, if that's the case, which Reddick said he would not do after the Tampa game, if that's the case, then, then you have to trade them. Then you have no choice. But if it's not the case, and the Eagles are just trying to get something for them, I think it's a mistake. Uh, mm -hmm. Chris Scott says, uh, and thank you for your membership for 29 months. He goes, if we have the money, then why not sign Haas to two-year, 50 million deal? He'll be gone until you, two years. He won't hurt us in the future. Yes. I mean, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, I say, I say first, I say just let him play out this year just to kind of like, to kind of like balance the whole thing out. Like, but I don't know. It, it really, it's, mm -hmm. and it's like, what are the Eagles asking for too? Because uh, I don't think the Eagles are going to just trade Reddick for a third round pick. I don't think they'll do that. No. Howie okay. does not get gypped off on no, trades. No, no. So somebody's going to have to pay. A uh, Fabio, Dave or Super Chad goes, what about Chop Robinson move up? See, I think if you trade Reddick, I almost feel like you've handcuffed yourself in the first round to have to go get a pass rusher. I think you have to because you have Nolan Smith. It, it, it pisses me off that he didn't play more last year mm -hmm. because to me, he's the big unknown. If he has seven, eight sacks last year, maybe we're saying, oh, he's ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but but you but other teams can't other teams trying to trade for Reddick can't look at Reddick and put him in the same boat as all these other edge rushers that are being traded for or signed because Reddick is a different breed because he's got double digit sack seasons. This is a totally different breed of a guy that can go to another team and flourish immediately. Like that's you know, you want you want this guy, high caliber edge rusher that go you know, what do you defend you know, seriously, what why do edge rushers get paid? They get paid to go after the quarterback. Right. That's 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 where the money comes from. Yeah. So they, they can't other how he needs to make these other teams realize that they can't look at Reddick the same way they look at other edge rushers because no one has, you know, what other than Miles Garrett, he's the only one that could be really compared to what Reddick does. And nobody compares to Reddick. So I don't think Howie's going to get fleeced if they get a third round pick for him. It, horrible trade. Horrible trade. Horrible. Won't be good. Horrible. Yeah. I'd rather have I'd rather have the chance to win a Super Bowl next year than a third round pick. Because I, I do. I think I think this pass rush is nasty and fast. I mean, they are nasty and fast. Um if you keep Reddick and, and you keep Huff and then Nolan Smith gets a chance to develop. You have to remember Brandon Graham is also is also, you know, not the same guy he was a few years ago. Uh T Grant, thank you for Super Take a swap ones with Atlanta for Reddick and draft eight. They would never do that, but I, yeah, of course, I would, I would be okay with that, a that's swapping a, yeah, of first, a big jump. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think they would. Uh, you know, my my thing is this: like, um, I think guys like Reddick, you know, I I think Reddick is very underrated in the NFL, and I I think teams look at him as like, well, he only does this one thing good, and you know. We can live without that, or we can find it somewhere else. And and I get that. You know, they all think, well, he's a good pass rusher, but he can't do anything else. But but he does it really good. And he does it at the most um 
you know, the most uh, clutch of times. I just don't think you you get a guy that single-handedly wrecked the 49ers, dominated the Giants in those playoffs, in those run, and you just move on from a guy like that casually. You know, I, I just don't, I don't I mean, think you that, do that that report isn't saying like the, the trade is going to get done or a trade is no. happening. Or at least it's saying that, you know, there's a chance that, you know, that he could be the odd man out. It's just showing from what has happened so far when they signed Bryce, Bryce off to all that money. And then Josh Wett got restructured, which we weren't really even expecting that at this point. We thought we thought of Josh Wett. Right. It was really going to happen. Right. Yeah. Um, but now with with this stuff with Reddick now, it's just it comes down to how teams, you know, if teams are at, from that report, if teams are looking at him that he's top value when it comes to edge rusher, I know he's turning 30. I mean, may, are they looking at the age? Is age the biggest thing on top of the money? Um, you know, long term. This isn't a long term guy. This is this is a guy that's gonna be here for you know, be on a team for a few years and um, you know, c- contribute immediately as soon as he hits the yeah. field. So yeah. Shohei Otani's new translators here. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. He goes, I bet both you guys Reddick is here next year. I still say, I have to agree with you. I, I still believe at the end of the day, Reddick is not going to get moved. And the reason I'm going to believe that is because I believe the Eagles will not get what they want compensation wise. So they'll figure a way to restructure on a one year deal. I see that as middle ground, you know. All right, you got two year deal or you got trading him. I think the middle ground is restructure yeah. a one year deal. I think the longer that it's quiet, the better it is for us. I think after Sweat got restructured, we would have heard like maybe a goodbye from Reddick or a I think something would have came out that Reddick was gonna be like, hey, I'm Appreciate you, Philadelphia. I'm heading. I don't know something like nothing came out after that Reddick restructure Reddick did. at all. Red, I mean, I mean, Sweat did was like, I'm going to miss you guys. It was over. Like it was. Yeah, done. right. Yeah. I see, and I and I like Sweat, but I would rather have kept Reddick. Yes, 100. percent Killer. Uh, Dave Super Chat goes trade Reddick for a second and use it to trade up for first. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, they, they could do that. You know, they could. I, I, it, it, it's going to be interesting. You know. It's it's an interesting thing. Now, if I think if we get out of the draft and Reddick is still on this team, he's not going anywhere. Seriously, like like you think if he, he's still? You think this thing is still going on until after the draft? Still? I think I think I think the most dangerous time for Reddick to go is the draft. Before the draft, from like right now through the draft is the biggest is the worst time. If he's still on this roster after the draft. I think it. I think the chances go up a lot that he stays. Mm. Uh, Mr. Rudy Poot, thank you for the super chat. He goes, fans stop their research at the college they play for. Chop Robinson stinks. He has never gotten more than five and a half sacks and can't stop the run. It is true. It is true. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. He's he wowed them at the combine. That's mm-hmm. that's the thing you have to fight against because you can see guys. Wow, people at the combine. I mean, I think of Mike Mamula, you know, uh, and and great combine, but nothing to show for it, you know. So yeah, I mean, listen, you you could you could be right. You could definitely be right. Now, I really like Turner and Verse. I, I like those two guys a lot, but I don't know how far uh, you have to go. Latu, Latu. I just the whole fireman thing bothers me, dude. I don't know. Really, huh? I, it really bothers me. Like Danny Watkins and him are going to be hanging out. I I don't know if I want to deal with it. But the guy did have thirteen sacks, though. I mean, there's no question he's talented. But I think I think Latu Latu. I don't think he's going to be around top ten. I think I don't think he's out of top. I think he goes in the top ten. Yeah, I think he's. Yeah, I thought he was the top fifteen at least. Like, I mean, I think he's going early. So, yeah. Yeah, Danielson says I don't want lat to lat. I I think the me- the medical retirement in 2020. I think people are turned off by that too because he had issues with his neck and you know almost you know medically retired. Then he came back and then he just became a monster after that. So I mean, oh yeah, that was a, a while ago. I mean, it was a while ago. So I wouldn't I wouldn't go crazy, but right, still a good player. Which King says didn't Joe Castro say we were extending Reddick like. A week ago, something like that, yeah, and and maybe we will. I mean, listen, we we thought a year ago Slay was about to get cut and go to Baltimore, and it changed at the last second, 
And then Sweat, I mean, Sweat had the thing like, I'm going to miss you guys. And then he came back. So maybe what will happen is maybe this is all negotiations, you know, because Reddick has the opportunity to go shop and try to see what he's worth, right? So he's out there shopping. It's been a while, and we haven't heard anything. Maybe he's not getting what he wants, and maybe the Eagles won't get what they want. Because remember, teams have to trade and then pay a guy a lot of money. It's hard for teams to want to do that. So either you have to be willing to trade and take a loss, or they have to be willing to take a loss on what they're getting mm. paid. So I can't see how Roseman no. trading Hassan Reddick for a third round pick, you know. He ain't taking a loss with this. I mean, not happening. No. Mm -mm. Mike Hawk, thank you for super chat. That's like Mike Hawk in England, like an English actor. <laughs> Mike Hawk. Yo, Philly had a dream. The Eagles draft Cooper from AM. Also wins defensive rookie of the year and squashed the winers in the playoffs. 34 to 6. Let's go. Dude, that must have been one hell of a long dream. <laughs> <laughs> because you had to see him draft, win rookie of the year, then kill the night in playoffs. And you remembered the score. You are the man. Thank you for the super chat. Oh man. Let's see here. Uh, JS Records and Entertainment. Joey, the whole Reddick thing has me chilly, too. I should be wearing a hoodie also. You mm -hmm. cold, Joey? I always wear a hoodie. But, no, nah, it's it's very unsettling because I think this changes what they do in the draft, and whether he goes or he stays. I think this changes a lot in the first round. I, I don't know. I really... I really hope this doesn't this doesn't keep going until after the draft because this I mean, is I mean if it's after the draft and that should be a good thing right that he's going to stay in yeah. I mean it would probably say he's going to stay in Philadelphia by that time but. I think I think if Reddick comes I think two things two guys and the draft affects them greatly Justin Simmons and Reddick I think if Reddick is here after the draft God. I think the chances that go up that he is uh, that he stays. Now, Justin Simmons, if he gets through the draft and he's still free agent, he's not going to sign with anybody till August. Yeah, what, at what point he's just going to wait it out? Because, you know, once those teams use up all their salary and they've drafted all those players, uh, he's going to he's gonna have to take less or go somewhere and can't wait for somebody to get hurt or something like that. I actually think the longer, and I said this in my video this morning, the longer that these two guys go every day, uh, as a free agent, as an eagle, the better the chances that we get them. I, I believe did, that. Did you see the Justin Simmons tweet? Mm -mm. So Justin Simmons, because he's he's active on Twitter, but not like crazy. But he definitely he retweeted something that the Eagles were involved in. It was the push tush, but it was a picture of the Eagles in Miami doing the push tush in my uh, at, you know uh, against Miami. Um, and he retweeted and said, it's some, oh, the Eagles will have the push tush back or something like that. And he said, oh, it's an offensive play. I have the tweet saved. He said, like, it's an offensive play, something like that, laugh out loud. And that was it. But I thought that was really weird how he would retweet something. And I checked the account to make sure it was it was his account. I made, I made sure, um, you know, and it seemed like he, why would he talk about, he would retweet something that the Eagles are involved in in a tweet. It was just. He hasn't done that. I even looked at some of his tweets that he's done like this offseason and nothing really close to that. I think Simmons is in the bag, dude. I think I'm 88%. I 88. think 88% he's coming here. Not, 80, look, not 89 or 87, but 88. 88%. Just because, you know, uh, who's that that other, that Bengals safety um, signed? I know there was mutual interest Scott. between Scott. He ended up signing with another team. Um, Julian Blackman visited the 49ers like a, a day or two ago. We haven't heard nothing on him, and he's a low-risk high reward move. Um, I know the Eagles would probably have interest to bring him in. They're definitely looking at another safety. There's no doubt. I, I'll Simmons. tell you what. I'd rather have Julian Blackman over Simmons. I'll be honest with you. And, and, and it's a youth thing. I, I like the guy. I want the guys under 30, man. I want the guys. I'm so sick and tired of the rotating guys every year. Mm -hmm where we got these one-year deals, and then they go. One-year deals, like, I'm sick of it. Get me guys here for a long time that can play together and gel. And uh, I would like to see Julian Blackman. Now, I think he's visiting. the. He's doing the whole visit thing. So I think he went to Buffalo, left without a contract. I think he might be visiting the Niners. Yeah, uh, He's a pretty good player, man. I, I, I think the kid's got a lot of upside. I, I would love to get a guy like that. Uh, Justin Simmons, too, don't get me wrong. 
It's just that I don't I see him more as like a two year move, you know. Yeah, I agree. A uh, big Marshall man, thank you so much for the super chat. He goes, uh, seems like how he picked to me. Y'all remember Sweat had devastating injury. How he gambled? Yeah, Sweat was like top high school prospect going into college. I think he had a big injury. Was it knee or foot? Something like that. It was a knee. And, uh, yeah, a lot of people thought he was done. And, uh, you know, he he took kind of a while to develop. But every year, every year he looked like, to me, he was getting a little faster, a little faster. And, uh, yeah, how he gambled then, and and we hit on it. They've done decent jobs with some late pass rushers. The early pass rushers is where we've had problems. You know, we've really struggled with that. Um, so we'll see, but uh, thank you so much, uh, for the super chat, my man. Uh, not be said Greer is an extension of the coaching staff. He's a practice squad quarterback. Absolutely. Yeah. He, he knows the system. Why is it? They were super chat. He goes, I take Reddick over any draft guys, period. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, if you keep Reddick to, to, to me, you have one of the premier closers. I don't know. I just look at it and go. How nasty is this pass rush with Reddick, Sweat, this kid Huff, uh, even, you know, having Brandon Graham as your fourth pass rusher, and then you have, the you know, who knows, the wild card's Nolan Smith. But um, to me, you know, they talk about, well, the Eagles need two pass rushers. I think Jow Fowler in that report goes on to say the Eagles got their two pass rushers with Huff and Sweat. But to me... I think you need three pass rushers in today's mm. game because the way they rotate guys in, you know? Yeah, I get it. More the merrier. Right? Let me see. I'm so far behind these chats. Uh, Jay Cox says, I trade back early in a second. There's going to be some team wanting a quarterback, then take uh, Edge Cooper and get draft capital. Right. I, I I would probably trade up with one of my seconds and then trade back with one of my seconds. Mm-hmm. Five part favorite super chat goes. So we pick up Simmons. What's the plan with Brown? Well, Brown, the way I see it, if Simmons is a two year guy at best, Brown coming back late for injury and thank you for super chat. What like November? So he's gonna come back like November. He he's not gonna be re- fully ready to go. And then the next year, he kind of can learn and get back in, you know, get back to his ways under uh, Simmons. And then when Simmons contracts up, he's ready to to kind of to kind of go. So so I, I essentially look at Simmons like giving Brown two years to try to develop. Yeah, he might not even play. He, I mean, even if he comes back, he might not even play that much. And it's going to take him a while to get to the guy's coming off a big injury like that. It's going to take a while to get back to his normal self too. So yeah. Mars says, I want Julian on my Giants back off Philly. Oh, if you want him on the Giants, then we definitely have to take him from we we we, <laughs> we, we, we have taken the Giants life, dude. We have. we have taken everything from them. We knock them out of the playoffs. We beat them every year. We steal their receivers that they want. We take their number two overall running back. We have stolen. We have we have we own the Giants, dude. We we like 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 we have taken We've taken their soul. You know, mm. it's great. I think, like, uh, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Luke Bradshaw, they were super chat. He goes, after seeing Sneed and Burns, did Sneed now, did Sneed get traded officially? Or did, or, or was it? He's like, got to get a physical. Close? I think it's waiting okay. for a physical. And it was a third round pick, right? Third, 25 third rounder. A 2025 third round pick was it? Uh, I think there was another pick, but it was I think it was a mid round, a late round pick for this year. That's the the thing. You have to trade a guy for a guy, and then you have to pay him. The, yes, the, right. You know, and he's a franchise guy who's one of the better corners whose contract was up. Now, if he's a third round pick, how are you going to get a third round pick for Reddick? It's not going to happen. Mm-mm. Luke Bradshaw, favor super chat. He goes, after seeing what Snead and Burns got traded for, the draft compensation we would get not be worth it. Thank you, Luke. Uh, let's get a deal done with Reddick and focus on other areas of the defense come draft night. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I agree with you, man. Perfect world uh, for me is this. You get Reddick back. 
whether a two-year one, you just get him back. He's back. Now you go in the draft, and I'm going to draft Quinion Mitchell, buddy. That's my guy. Mm. So far right now, I love that kid. Yeah. And I am going to start him. I am going to start him right away over Bradbury. Then I'm going to trade up in the second round, and I am going to take a wide receiver. Okay, if I could choose any receiver to take, I would take Adonis Mitchell because I believe eventually one day he can play outside. So you want, so you don't want the guys that's gonna, you don't want a small receiver that's just that's, that's stick that's stuck into the wide receiver three spot. You want a guy that can start at wide receiver three, that could be a future guy when AJ Brown potentially leaves. That's, that's my thinking. Want. Okay, but I mean, if if he's gone. Or the Eagles take like a lad McConkey. I think mm-hmm. see McConkey is a guy that you stick in the slot, and I don't think you ever move him. Right. right, right. But he's better than what you have in Devontae Parker and 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 Paris Campbell. So that that was would be my two picks because I look at it like if I get a corner like Mitchell or Arnold or you know, um, you get a guy like that, you start him, then you get a receiver like that you know, as the third wide receiver and you play him, I look at that as a starting player mm-hmm. because, because it's a third wide receiver. They use the third wide receivers a lot. Then I take that next second round pick. I move back and I get two more picks. And then I, you know, then I round it off. I got to get myself offensive lineman. I think you got to get yourself another linebacker. I think you got to get yourself a running back. And, and that's kind of how I would do it. But I could tell you right now, I'm coming out of this draft with at least two starters right away yeah you know yeah i mean they got the three fifth rounders too on top of it quinion mitchell to me i i, I mean do he i don't know I, I he reminds me of sauce gardner now i'm not saying he saw he just reminds me of him in terms of of draft comparison like how he looks like size wise um now he has a play. He played as a Toledo. The big question with him is competition. Talent, but I right. think I think you have that for a lot of these guys. You know, but he uh, he's got that pushback. He's got he he's a corner that wants to hit so somebody funny. in the mouth. That's he's the type yeah. of guy that you and want. If, and and then if you don't want to go him, you want to go stick with Alabama or Georgia. I mean, Arnold's fine too. I I really like Arnold. Mm-hmm. I think he's a player. But like, why not get a young corner that? And it's going to be with you four or five years down the road, you know. Uh, Sean Davis, man, thank you so much for the super chat, man. He goes late to the party. What's up, y'all? What's going on? Oh, my friend, how are you? Um, Thank you so much for that super chat, man. It was very generous of you. Uh, Michael DeJohn says, what do you guys think of the Greer signing? I I think the Greer signing is, uh, you know, camp quarterback, practice squad kind of guy. Nothing, right. nothing I'd worry about. Right. Carlos Rosado, Dave Super Chat. Goes, salute, salute, fellas. Whenever I hear the Giants fans talking trash, I just tell them Spike don't play with girls. <laughs> Let <laughs> alone. Yes. Mal Dave Super Chat. He says Reddick is gone. Time to move on. Well, he, well, he's not. He's not going yet. Not going Super yet. Chat, he's not going anywhere yet. We we have seen guys a lot closer to being traded or gone that wind up staying in the last two years, both Sweat and um, Darius Slay. So it's not over till it's over. Demon Badger, David Superchick goes, biggest playoff choker, Dallas or Buffalo? Dallas. Dallas is, is a choker, bigger choker. Although the Buffalo lost, they, they, they lost like by a field goal, right? The, the kicker missed a field goal. They they should have hit. I yeah, think I think so. Playoffs. Yeah, Dallas just gets destroyed. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Dustin says I heard Will Greer was signed because there's a janitor position available at like Lincoln Financial Field. More specifically, cleaning the public restroom <laughs> facility. That's <laughs> probably about right. Yeah. Uh, first says uh, if Fangio can't use Reddick with his scheme, then there's not something wrong with his scheme. <laughs> I agree. You know, it, it's so funny. I always think about what Dick Vermeil said. Dick Vermeil said a good coach doesn't just try to make players fit into his scheme. He takes the talent around the players and builds his scheme that way. So if, if Vic Fangio can't look at a guy, and I don't understand. See, like Matt Patricia, to me, showed his true colors that he stinks. Because why did he take over as defensive coordinator and then try to implement 
a lot of new things to a defense late in a year like that when you know that learning that kind of stuff takes a whole off season. Why would you do that? And why would Reddick was dropping? I think they said Reddick was dropping in coverage with Patricia like thirty percent of the time. Why on earth would you ever do that? You know, leaving you know, Bradbury on leaving Bradbury on an island. You know, for the last touchdown for Seattle, like why? Like you don't man on man. Bradbury's his own guy, regardless. But I mean, you don't you don't put him man to man all by himself with no safety help. I mean, that's right. Just bad game right. planning. Uh, Dan Quan Barkley says it's clearly a finance. It is a financial issue with with uh, Reddick. But to me, it's like he's already under contract. If you're willing to eat thirty-five million dollars in dead money to get rid of Carson Wentz, I think you could honor the last year of Reddick's contract. Mm-hmm. No, I mean we're not we're not hurting for for cap space right now. Right, right, we're so good. It's like it's like I don't know. Just keep hey, listen. If they get two second round picks for him, all right, I get it. You know, it, it, a lot of it is going to depend what the value is and if Reddick is holding out. If I see a report that says Hassan Reddick will hold out without extension, then you have to trade him. But you know what? Then you're going to lose all your trade leverage too. So right. it, 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 it sucks. Fabio Davis Super goes, Trotter Jr., should we get him better than Dean? Uh, a lot of people don't like him. I like him. I would want him. Who? What I like is that his father said he will not wear a Cowboys jersey if his son goes there. I thought that was oh a trot, yeah, cool. yeah. You know. Big Marshall Davis Super Chat. He goes, You know, Matt was forced to do that. We in Howie Vision. We definitely in Howie Vision, my man. No doubt about it. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Super chat. Uh let's see. We would have to throw Reddick more money to be content. Huff making more. Well, yeah, well, I mean, you could restructure his contract. So you don't have to extend them, but you could restructure the final year where you throw them more money, you know, give them extra money, make them happy for one year mm-hmm. and keep them. <clears throat> you know, I, I would at this point, if you said, all right, we get a third round pick for Reddick or you get to keep them next year. I'd rather keep them. I think I think he's going to give you more playing than he's not. I just think it's a sick. It's a really like it's a really awesome <laughs> Like this, this front, this pass rush is awesome with the way it is right now. I, like, I, I don't want to. It's like to me, it's like one move you don't have to make. You know, mm-hmm. I know. Reddick will just hold out. Well, Reddick said after the Tampa game at the press comp when he was being, he said he wouldn't hold out. Now I don't know if he changed his mind, and I don't know if that's true. But if Reddick is going to hold out, then they have to trade him. Uh, that that changes everything. A holdout is a game changer, in my opinion. JHS uh, Record Entertainment. Uh, oh, I think this is you, Joey. Is JHS Records Entertainment. Upgrade a membership. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much, very much, dude. Appreciate it. <laughs> How much you all got left, Catway? Did, did you see any updated figures yet? I, I've gotten different numbers. I The website, I don't think, is updated either. I, it's I have up, no idea. I think I've heard anywhere from 22 to 34 million. So it's somewhere in that range. Yeah, the Eagles I mean, that's have a what I'm lot seeing. of cap space. I'm seeing the Reddick thing. It gives you eleven plus, like right. eleven million plus, regardless. So you're still going to yeah. chunk a change back. So restructure Reddick. Give him, you know, give him some extra money so he's happy for one year, and and restructure the deal. And then you got eleven more million dollars of cap space. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. That looks like and and that money rolls over, right? So yeah, it rolls over. And then if Reddick leaves next year, you get compensatory pick, no? Yeah, I think you do. So, you know, if 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 what what would be a compensatory pick for Reddick? A third round pick? A third round compensatory pick? So any trade that you make has to be more than a compensatory pick would be worth. You know? Yeah, get that second in my, round. In dude. my opinion. Uh Steven says 500. My linebacker is Peyton Wilson over Trotter Jr. I started watching a little of Peyton Wilson, and he does look really good. He looks exactly like Dallas Goddard, but he does look good. He, he does. Um, Maul, David Super Chat, he goes, Did you see Mark make an Eagles video about all our free agents? That dude's going crazy. Oh, that dude's insane. 
He is losing his mind. At one day, he has a video crying about the Cowboys did nothing. Then he does another video about how he understands Jerry Jones and the genius of, of what they're doing. And, and he said he did a video that the Eagles season is cursed because they signed a running back and running backs never work out. Like he's going mad. I did a video on Paris Campbell's. He's trying to say that I was saying and accused me of calling him Jerry Rice. It's like, the guy's nuts. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Mel. Did you open the play? No, I'm going to be doing after this stream. I will be doing the uh, opening of uh, I will be doing the play button opening unboxing. So I will be streaming that you know when this is over. So if you guys want to come hang out, more than welcome. Uh, Leon says Kansas City got a late round pick for Snead, and see Snead is in his prime. No way we get a third <laughs> rounder for Reddick. I mean that's the thing. That's Teams aren't going to want to pay a ton and then have to give them $25 million to a 31-year-old. It just it, it, it doesn't work that way. You know, they might want to move Reddick. Reddick might want to leave. I don't know that it's going to work out. I think we might, you know, I think it might work out for us that he stays. Yeah, I, he better. <laughs> I mean, don't do you think like do you think that that if you keep Reddick, that this gives you like do you like how good do you think this pass rush could be with Reddick and then losing Reddick? Yeah, because I think you're even out on both sides. I don't I don't think there's anybody on that Reddick level that's left. I don't, you know, because Brand Graham's coming in for one more year as a pure rotation. And, you know, Josh Sweat is a good player, but he's not on the level of, you know, uh, he's not on the level of Hassan Reddick. It's a huge loss. It is. I, mean, it, I think your defensive line gets weaker and I think teams are going are, are gonna to go more in that, th you know, offenses will go more in that direction on that side of the ball because it's weaker on that side. I don't know. I, I mean, if they if they got rid of Reddick and, and somehow moved up and got Latsu or got the best edge rusher, I'm not going to complain about it. I think it'll be great. Um, but, you know, you don't know what these these guys are a gamble in the draft. At least what you know now is that, you know, Reddick, you know, you have it, you know, we're not rebuilding. If we were rebuilding and we were getting rid of guys, you know, then fine, you'd make this trade. But um, because like other players are not getting traded for much compensation, like, but you're, you know, maybe if Reddick was a little bit younger, I, I don't know. I don't know where it, they go by. They go by what other teams are trading other players for, like, but there's not really that much high compensation. But I know how he's not going to get fleeced, and, you know, they better keep him, man. Gonna... What, do you, what do you think? Like, like I look like. What are your thoughts on Bryce Huff? Like, I think Bryce Huff is 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 going to be good. I think he's mm -hmm. going to be double digit guy. But but the concern I have is he only did it one year, mm -hmm. and and you know now he's coming to a new team. Are we really ready to put all that on him to be what Reddick was? I mean, I don't know. I mean, he. The problem with Bryce Huff is that he hasn't played a full season. That's the issue because he only played forty three percent of the snaps, so he hasn't even played a full season yet under his belt. So obviously, there's probably talks like, "Hey, like, you know, are you able to play a full season?" You know, I mean, you're. I mean, he's top three. He's the top three player when it comes to pressure, um, in general. Top three player when it comes to pressure rate and win rate on one on ones. It's not nine out of ten times he's oh. beating this guy one on one. Um, so that's what it comes down to. I think within another year, Thank you know, you. he might, he might not hit double digit sacks this year, but I think, um, you know, he'll have a good year this year, but I think like after one year in the system, I think he'll play a lot better. I think yeah. after, after a year, he'll be better. Yeah, I, I do too. And, and then, you know, the great unknown is Nolan Smith. If, if Nolan Smith develops, mm. I mean, that, that, that would change everything, you know? I'll tell you what, dude, I, I I know they wouldn't do this, but I almost rather keep Reddick. And then if these guys like Huff and Nolan Smith are playing really, really good, and then you want to move on from it by the trade deadline, I would almost rather do that than 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 just trade trade them right now. Yeah, know? like the trade deadline is where like if you're able if you want to trade, like that's that's what I'm saying. Like if Reddick, I don't know. I mean, that would I mean by that time you'd think Reddick wants to stay there unless like I don't know. I I think that would be a really bad idea unless they they could fleece a team. You know that's fleece season when it comes to the trade deadline. Yeah. You want to fleece I, teams I, during. I, season. I was debating my dad. My dad was like, "Well, you know, I don't the the Huff move. You know, it's a big deal. You're going to lose Reddick." I'm like, "No, you didn't lose Reddick yet. Like it, the Huff deal and the Huff move to me is really a great move 
because he's your third pass rusher, not your first or second. That's what I want. I and and I want to see him go out there. Like if Huff goes out there and he has to me, if he has like seven to nine sacks, doesn't get double digit sacks, but has limited snaps because you got the other guys, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to let him take the next step. You know what I'm saying? But I, I think with I think if this defense keeps us on Reddick, I think this team I think they're legit Super Bowl contender again. Yeah, I, I I really do. I agree. You know, but they they've got they've got to go out and do that. You know, mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. Uh, I'm open. James, I said I'm open to drafting Chop Robinson in the first round. I think the Eagles might be open to that too. I mean, we we talked about that earlier. If if Reddick goes. You don't know. I mean, it, it, we might be wrong about Latu and some of these other guys. These other guys might drop down. I mean, it always happens. Every time we think someone's going early, they always drop. And then we're like, damn, the Eagles can actually get him. You know, like Jalen Carter. Like we thought Seattle was going to pick him up. Thought the Bears were going to pick him up in front of us, you know. But it seems like a lot of teams just were turned off from all the offseason stuff. So, yeah. you know, the Eagles were gifted yeah. yet again. Yeah. Danielson mm-hmm. says we need dogs. That's what Huff is. Yeah, that that's what he's he is. I think you're right, and that's what Reddick is. I mean, Reddick is your number one closer, and is your biggest playmaker. So at, at the end of the day, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, I, I I have a hard time seeing the Eagles get ripped off in any trade. You know, the only the only thing that I think we don't know. And I think it's a, it's the game changer with with what I think they should do at Reddick is if he's demanding a trade. Like if he's willing, if he's going to hold out and stuff, then then you got to trade him. That that completely changes everything. But if he's willing to play, and the, you know, if you could restructure a one year deal, you got to keep him. In my opinion. Yeah. I- if they don't, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a bad day. I don't think it's I don't think it's anything to be happy about, but because uh, you can't replace that that late in his career you can't go after another player whether it's the draft or another trade or something you can't you can't replace what he's going to give to this team you just can't not yeah. not this year you can't yeah mal says oh we can't overrate reddick because we like him i i don't think we no. are overrating him I, I i honestly like like i don't think this is about overrating him uh i mean you're talking about a guy who's led your team in sacks two years in a row he's had Double digit sacks four years in a row. He did it with three different teams. And um he constantly has been one of the big guys, really the only guy on defense to, to be a closer and 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 really change the game on defense. I, I don't think we're overrating him. You know, I, I honestly don't. I think the whole I think we're fair. The whole point of the situation is that Nolan Smith should have produced last year. On top of the injuries that Nolan Smith had, he wasn't given an opportunity. Like Sean Desai, middle of the year was like, you know, someone one of the beat writers asked him, like, hey, like, why isn't Reddick playing? He's like, Oh, there's only a certain amount of snaps we can give certain players, but this is your first round pick you're not even I mean he's played special teams and then he got more reps after Barnett left then later you know when we were going towards our crumble he started to you know play a lot more but it's not enough time and plus the way the coaching staff was the way they put these guys in certain situations like no player is going to succeed in that defense so every position was flawed at that point you yeah, know, it really if, was. If he got sick, if he had like five to ten sacks, something like that, I, I would feel a little bit better going into you know the season. Yeah. But, but but that's but like you said, dude, like like having Reddick here, like if you're if you're working towards a Super Bowl this year, having him is just a luxury at this point. And if Nolan Smith, you know, the you know, Nolan Smith had the offseason shoulder surgery, and you know, the rumor is that you know Fangio is gonna give him a, a huge workload. Uh, when it comes to this defense and you know he's probably gonna be an outside linebacker most likely and we need to see it you know so right right yeah no no there's no no question about it um jameson smith i hope the baby's doing well uh four double digit sacks a year in a row absolutely absolutely and richie mc says the reddick sucked the last six games so yeah you're right everybody who, did though but, but <laughs> who didn't yeah yeah who, who didn't <laughs> right, exactly. I, and listen, I, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that 
Patricia was dropping him in a coverage 30% of the time. I like, you know, they really, I don't know, they really made a big mistake with getting rid of the defensive coordinator and going with Patricia. And, and to me, it's not even that they fired a defensive coordinator. It was that Patricia tried to implement new bunch of new things that these guys hadn't done all year. At, at late in the year, you can't do that. He should have just been calling the plays and, and and mixing some things up that they've already done and found out what worked, but he didn't. He tried to start adding things that he wanted to do, and it didn't work. And and you can't – the only guy the last what, five, six weeks to me that was really good for the Eagles on both offense and defense was Devontae Smith. Besides that, I mean, that whole team faded, man. So I don't know how you hold that on Reddick, you know? Reddick is going to Atlanta for ninety and a half million dollar deal. That's fine, but what am I getting? What are we getting back in return? Mm -hmm. I don't care how much he gets. Like, like people get all caught up in the money. Well, this guy's getting this much money. That guy's. I don't care. The money that doesn't mean anything to me. I, I I don't care because I'm not paying it. All I care is what's the cap number. <laughs> what's the cap number? Long term, like how does it work with our cap? Um, what are we getting for Reddick? They could they could pay him two billion dollars. I don't care. What are we getting for him? That's mm. what I want to know. You know, Forest Hill says Sean decided went ten and one as a defensive coordinator. Maybe some was luck, but only second uh, ever year as a defensive coordinator. How can you blame him? Bad call to demote him. Everything fell apart. I I think everything got totally screwed up. I think Patricia came in and he was trying to implement new things into the system and and, mm -hmm. and they started doing things that they hadn't done before and listen we see you know it's not like hockey or basketball where you could change coaches like it like these systems take a whole off season to implement so to me it was just like i i just didn't understand it you know i i think yeah reddick didn't play good at the end of the year nobody did nobody did so how do we how do we hold these guys responsible you know right right uh jokers says this trade makes zero sense if it happens whatever we get returned won't have the same value as reddick agreed who else gets pressure in sacks shaking my head we make good moves and then make head scratching dumb ones yeah it's like this is like one too many moves like to me this is the move you don't have to make this is the move you know focus on getting reddick to play at least one more year or you know give him an extension if 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 they sign reddick to a two three year deal I'm not going to be mad. Are you going to be mad? I'm not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm uh, close. Chris Melnick says, uh, hey, Super Tate goes, you feel your boy's still free agent? Yannick for a year. Is he a free agent again? I thought he signed I... the multi-year with Chicago. Yeah, he did. But... I thought he did. Oh, I know he signed. I don't know how long. Well, he might still be out. What's his face is a free agent, too. Clowny. Um, Clowny, he had nine and a half sacks again. Guy gets close to 10 sacks every year, but never gets 10 sacks and is constantly moving. Like, it's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Bill, thank you for super chat. He goes, what do you think about drafting cornerback Cam Hart? I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know anything about him. Do you know anything about him? No. Mm -mm. I, I, I don't know. Give me like, give me two weeks and I'll tell you. I, I, I'm, I, I'm just getting ready to dive in deep to the linebackers and the cornerbacks in this draft. Um, so give me a few weeks and I'll, I'll have an answer for you. Dad says he fits in fine with Fangio's uh, defense. We have literally been running Fangio's defense for you. It, listen, it worked with Jonathan Gannon. It was basically Fangio's defense for the most part, right? Maybe a little more hybrid than 3-4, but uh, I think Reddick should be able to flourish in it. Yeah, I don't see why not. You know? Dave Duff says the fans deserve to see what Reddick and Huff look like <laughs> rushing both ends. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I think it'll be nasty, man. And just, th you know, uh, and you think, you know, we're talking about the edge. I mean, we can't forget Jalen Carter is going in the second year. We, if, if he takes a giant step forward and then he's nasty getting to the quarterback at pressure up the middle, they're going to be nasty. It's a nasty defensive line. Oh, Davis, you see, you know, his third, third year? Huh? Is Davis second or third year? You said third. You said you said second year. Is it second year? Right. Second year. 
Um, his third year. He's going to his third who, season right now. Who, Carter? No, 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 uh, Jordan Davis. Yeah, Jordan Davis is going his third year. Okay. To me, okay. it's a make or break. It's a make or break year. Right, 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 right. Well, let's see what this says. Joe Vegas. Defense fell apart. Riddick shares in the fall. Tampa beat us. Give me a break. You're paid to make sacks. No excuses. Then why is Josh Sweat back? Why Why is he back? Why are the all these other guys back, but Reddick has to go? Mm. Uh, Reddick still, despite not doing anything at the end of the year, had 11, what, 11 and a half sacks? He's still 11 and a half sacks. Still the biggest closer. Then you go back to the playoffs a year before that. He was he, he dominated the Giants and he dominated the 49ers. I'm not saying you have to give Reddick a three year extension. I'm saying you can't give him away for nothing. People say, oh, he didn't have six sacks. He didn't do nothing in the last six games. So let's give him away for a third round pick and then let Howie Roseman pick the third round pick or whatever. And he usually misses on anyways. I don't, I don't understand it. Are we trying to win a Super Bowl or not? Yeah, Reddick shares some of the blame. There's no doubt about it. He didn't show up. Neither did anybody on that defense or team. No, there's no so, team out there going into a year like this with already. I mean, when they said they were aggressively going after Bryce Huff, like they <laughs> they went after him. Like they right. they wanted him, and they yeah. got him pretty quick. So. You know, so then we were really confused on what was even going to go on after that with with Hassan Reddick and what the rest of this edge, you know, the rest of these edge rushers were going to look like uh, coming out of free agency. But you know, very, I, something's got to get done, dude. Like very hard for me done. to get rid of a guy with double that gets double digit sacks every year. It just really, it's just really hard for me to. Do. And then to rely on guys that have only played one year and only really did it one year, and then say, okay, yeah, we're fine. They're going to make up. When you, you know, and this is like, you don't have to do this. It's not like Reddick is a free agent. We're not talking about signing him to a new contract. He's not a free agent. He's under contract. All, all I'm suggesting is that Reddick plays out the last year of his contract. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just let him play the last year's contract out. I think you're going to get more value in that than a, a, a mid round pick. But, you know, I mean, it, it, look, the Eagles watch them trade, watch how he somehow get like a first round pick. All right. That's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming he's not going to get a first or a second. Mm -hmm. You know, but we'll see. Jason Fetter, uh, welcome to is it me. Welcome to uh, Dig Bad Super Fans, man. Thank you so much for joining, man. Appreciate you. Welcome back, actually. So, thank you, ma'am. So, what do you take out of the reports? We talked about this like weeks ago. Like, what do you take out of the reports from? I forgot who said it. I, I forgot who said it. You, you probably know the reports that came out that the defensive line took plays off, or they they weren't playing up the standard. I think it, I, I I don't know who. I think it was McMullen that reported yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that they took. Well, it, it, and he was primarily talking about Josh Sweat. That they did, they didn't do things that they asked at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, I I think that I think firing Desai was a horrible idea because I think Patricia came in and tried to make them do too many new things and tried to change too much. And I think these guys were confused. I think these guys were disenchanted, and it showed. Uh, you know, listen, if we're if we're gonna blame Reddick for like the end of the year and what happened, then we need to get rid of the whole, the whole roster because they That's all how, did the same thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, I, I get it. Like, I mean, I mean, if you have guys like coming off a year like that, I mean, there, I, that's why I can't put it on so many players. Like how many weeks can you go by being excited through practice every week and no adjustments are being made and you you're, you're trying to like, switch the energy going into these games. And then when the same things keep happening, no adjustments are made. And I, I don't, I can't blame them that much. Like if the coaches are, you know, there's no change. Oh, yeah. I mean, I blame like, him. I, I think he's responsible too. He didn't show up. Yeah. yeah I, I yeah. get it. I totally get it. But, but you know, well, he, he's still got to play somewhere. He's still under contract. All I'm saying is he's still under contract. Make him play. If, if you know if he if he's holding out, then then you have to. If, if he's holding out, 
The Eagles have to do what they have to do. I get it. I don't want to go the route where he's holding out and he's here and he's not happy. I don't want to deal with that. But if he's willing to play under contract or you can make him happy for at least one more year, I think that you get more value out of that than any pick you're going to have, unless it's a really high pick. I get it, yeah. Izzy David Super Chat goes, you and Joey on fire keep schooling them rookies. Thank you, man. Thanks, appreciate that. We appreciate that. It's going to be interesting. It, it really is to see what, what happens. Um, no doubt about it, but... There's still I mean, a lot going on. I mean, it's not even, I mean, there's still, you know what I mean? Like, it's like safety and, you know, the Justin Simmons thing and, uh, you know, this Reddick debacle that's going on are really the only two things I'll be satisfied with. You know, get this get this done and, uh, you know, we're ready for the draft. You know, we're, we're ready to get in there. Yeah, I, I'm okay. Listen, if the Eagles say we, we don't want to extend them, okay, fine. Just just keep, restructure one year deal, bring them in. And let's go. And, and I'm okay with it. Now, if you're going to tell me, you know, because there are reports that they, they want us two second round picks for him. All right, you get two second round picks and then, all right, go ahead, trade them. Go ahead. I'm not going to, what am I going to say about that? That's a lot. You get a first round pick, trade them. Great. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to get some late, like a late third round pick or a third round pick in 2025, I don't know. I think you get more value out of letting them play next year. No? Yeah. I don't know. We, we, we will see. We will see. Uh, I don't know, man. Is there anything else you want you want to say? Anything else before we? Yeah, get I mean, up? and we've been through almost two weeks. We've been through like what two weeks of free agency, pretty much almost. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, we've made a lot of moves. It's only been maybe a couple couple days where we like really didn't do anything, but uh, they've been really active. You know, they've been active oh, through. Yeah. You know, hiring two coordinators, hiring assistant coaches, and hitting free agency with, you know, 47. They start out with, what, 47, 46, 47 and a half million dollars in cap space, which the Eagles normally don't have that much money available. And, you know, they they went at it. They, they freed up some guys. They made some moves. And I think we've gotten better this offseason so far. And it's got a couple more things we got to do. And then we could head right in straight to this draft. So, yeah. Good. No, I agree. Fabio Williams, thank you for super goes, Jordan Davis needs a hard offseason. Yeah, Jordan Davis – and, and Jalen Carr, to me, after it's all said and done, as much as we talk about the edge rushers, I think those two guys are the key to defense. Because if they play good and get pushed up the middle, everything will will kind of work out, you know? There was a video that came out this morning on uh, Jordan Davis. I forgot who he was working out with, but he was working out um, doing the bags outside. He was, uh, you know, running around the bags and stuff. So he looked like he was training really hard this morning. So He, he has to be. To me, he's a make or break year for him. It is. Julian, thank you for Super Chat because I feel like Howie is trying to acquire A.J. Terrell. Interesting. Interesting. Acquire um, a player in the trade, maybe. Yeah. It'd be interesting, yeah. Uh, is that just a feeling or or do you have – did you read something on it? Um, anyways, thank you for that Super Chat. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us. Uh, what, what, are your, what are your upcoming plans for your channel? Um, yeah, so we'll have a video out tomorrow, stream tomorrow, been streaming every day, pretty much, um, just, you know, hanging out, talking, talking Eagles and that's it. I mean, other than that, it's really it. I mean, yep. you know, we'll get into the draft stuff soon. Um, you know, me and Philly, we'll do, we'll do some, we'll do some mocks and, uh, yeah. you know, we'll do like a mock on, on stream later on. Maybe we'll have, you know, maybe we'll get Joe Castro on maybe, there um, you go. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll do some different things. So, uh, yep. yeah, definitely, definitely. It. Well, let me thank everybody for joining us. Uh, we're going to get out of here. I I'll have a video out tomorrow. You'll probably you do. You got stuff going on tomorrow, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I'll have a video out in the morning. I'm also going to be doing my uh, plaque unboxing. I'm going to be streaming Ooh. for a while. So if you guys want to come hang out, Joey, you're uh, obviously you're welcome to come to on too if you want. Um, but uh, I'll be doing that. So if you guys want to come hang out, you're more than welcome. And uh, yeah. Uh, with that said, we out of here. Peace. Peace. Two minutes to go. You got plenty of time. Come on. Oh, oh shit! Dad! No! no. Dad. It's oh, over! Shit. It's over! This game is over! Cut it off! It's over! Fuck. I, I, Congratulations, Green Bay! Congratulations, Green Bay! Congratulations, Green Bay! I said run the ball. Congratulations, man. Green Bay! Dad Prescott, you need to be fired today! Mm. That was on you, Dad! That was on you, Dad! That was on you, Dad! I said run the ball. That was man. on Dad Prescott!
I'm an idiot because I buy into this shit. I buy into this shit. Cause here's the thing. I am a grown ass man and I talk the talk. <sighs> it is killing me.